What's good, you guys? It's your boy Jay Freshman again, back with another tutorial. Today, we're going to be talking about side chaining. And pretty much, what side chaining is, is like making sure frequency doesn't clash, like frequency that are in the same like range. So that's why most of the time we're always like side chaining the kick with the 808 because they both are in the low end air um part of the spectrum. And obviously we want our kicks to like shine through. So what the side chaining does is pretty much duck the frequency of the bass when the kick hits. And that's how you're able to like get this effect where you can have the bass st still s sounding good and the kick is still um in its own place. Mixing is all about um each instrument having its own place, its own space. So without a further to do, let's begin. So I got 808 and a kick pulled up already. And so let's talk about context first before we get into side chaining. Because I promise you, everything is about context. You don't want to just be side chaining when you don't have to. And I'm gonna show you a few examples when you really don't have to. Like for one, let's say your um you have your kick pattern and it's just going like this. And sometimes the bass hits along with the kicks. Like that. So let's say that's your rhythm. Necess like it's not necessary to like really side chain in that sense because the bass is not hitting with the kicks all the time. You feel me? Like that's why I'm telling you guys, if you start to listen to other producers that's telling you to always side chain the 808s and kicks, always um EQ, always compress, you will really never understand mixing or become very unique at mixing because mixing is all about taking care of the things that are going to really make a difference. Not this doing all these little unnecessary minutia things. You, you feel me? Like of course it's going to sound a little bit better because you're doing but you don't want to take that route I promise you because then you're first of all delay compensation is a thing meaning that where you have all these plugins it will delay your whole beat and it would just make it sound weird and then on top of that there's just many reasons of why you just don't want to you just want to tackle the big important things rather than these little things and I know before you producers come at my head talk about the little things are the big things yeah in a sense, like obviously cutting out a little of the low end of a piano, that it's a little thing because you're cutting a little out of the low end, but obviously that makes a big difference. I'm talking more of like how I just explained where the 808s is not going alongside the kick, so it's really no point to be side chaining. But let's put it back where um, the 808s are hitting the same time as the kicks. So now, since they're both hidden at the same time, they're both fighting for that spot. And let's look, take another look at context of when you want to um, side chain. So let's look at the base information. Hold on. So you can see the fundamental frequency is 50, but also th this base still goes below that. Like you can still see some information right here in the 30 hertz. And let's take a look at the kick. Look, this kick takes all um takes more low end than the bass does. Like it has more low end than the bass does. <laughs> so, in this sense, you want to side chain. Like, if let's say your kick wasn't really didn't have that much low end. Let's say we move it up um a couple notes. And take a look at the kick again. You see, it's not as bright. And let's move it up a little bit more. Just kind of want to show you guys my point. See, now the low end, there's not really as much low end as from before. So this is what I mean. So if a person's telling you to side chain all the time, and it's like, it's not necessary, bro, because look at, there's barely any low end. It's not cl really clashing with the bass. You feel me? And this is also a technique. like. Put your kick in a different um, note, like in a higher pitch, and 
that can fix the problem as well from not having your bass and your kicks clash. Like it could even be right here. And some of you guys may not like that sound and I get it. It doesn't work all the time. There's no one thing that works all the time. You feel me? Especially if it's always a different beat, you know, but I promise you that method does work sometimes where you just go to a higher pitch and it just moves the, um, the frequencies out the way. So they all have their own space. And like I said, you know, that makes a big difference. And one more thing before we go into the side chain, because I need y'all to really understand it's all about context, man. There's another thing called time shift that people aren't using. And what time shift is like, so I'm messing with the 808 right now. The 808 is going to hit a little bit later, like milliseconds later after the kick hits. So if I had it all the way up, you're going you're gonna to hear that it's offbeat. Yeah, you can hear that the 808 is offbeat. Hold on, let me put the kick back in this position. Okay, we're gonna bring it down a little. About right there. So that gives it room. It moves. It, it gives it that little space where, because like I said, side chaining is about when the kick hits, then the bass ducks. That's pretty much kind of doing the same thing because the bass is coming, instead of bass is coming in a little bit later in millisecond wise. So these are all methods, man. Before you think about side chaining, you know, think about these. Like I said, if you know more than one way of doing things, trust me, your workflow is going to be a lot better and you're going to really make sense of your mixes. And with this, with the um, shift me, um, knob, this is about groove. And groove is a big part of side chaining. And let's get into side chaining and I'm going to show you why. So this is how you side chain. We're going to side chain the kick with the 808. So in able to do that, we're going to right click on this arrow and go to side chain to this track. Then we're going to go to the 808. We're going to bring up, um, I'm going to do like stock plugins. I might do another video with third party plugins. I'm going to show you guys how to do like side chaining with third party plugins. It's a bit different. So here, here you go. We're going to put in the limiter. We're going to go to our compressor. Now the main knobs we're going to use is the threshold, the ratio, and the release. We don't really need to use the attack or the sustain, in my opinion. So let's play it. So let's bring our ratio like all the way down pretty much and our threshold all the way down. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Before we even do those, we got to, um, of course, put in an input, which is the kick. Now, here we go. So you can see it visually. Every time the kick hits, it's ducking the um, bass. And what the release does is like, it's kind of like the shift meter in a sense, because you got to fit that in the groove. Like, let's say you, what I mean by that is like, let's say you're, um, cause when the bass is getting duck, if it takes too long to come up, then it's going to sound off beat. You feel me? And that's what the release is. Look how long it's taking 808 to come back up and you can see it visually. Like you could tell it's kind of off beat. A good way to fix this or a good way to like get it on beat is use a metrodome. That's like the sweet spot right there. See? That sounds a lot better. You can hear the kick, you can still hear the 808. And with the um, the ratio is like how hard I guess you want it to, to compress. And then the threshold is like if you don't want it to duck the volume that much. So it's kind of like a volume meter in a sense. 
let's say we just want to duck it a little think of it as like a wet and dry knob you feel me in a sense like the more we bring it up the less you're going to hear the side chaining and that's pretty much you know what side chaining is like in the simplest way man like and there's many ways to side chain i'm gonna show you guys another way as well first of all you can even use like gross beat as side chaining you know let's unlink this real quick and i'll show you what i mean so let's say we want to side chain the 808 go to gross beat there goes side chain effect right there and let me just turn off the limiter so with this it's going to require more listening and more of you finding like the sweet spot of it just kind of mess around with it like Obviously, make sure you have these points at the same spot. Me, personally, I wouldn't use this way, but this is also a way, you feel me? Like like I said, always have more than one tool in on your belt, you feel me? <laughs> so. And remember, sidechain is not only for 808s and kick. Let's say... You have like a melody playing and it got all this like mid range frequency, and you know that's where the snare kind of hits. Instead of like like EQing out some of the mid and the um piano or whatever to make room, you could easily do a side chain and just duck it. And so therefore you'll be able to keep that piano um you'll be able to keep those frequencies. It's not like you're you're going it's essentially taking it out, but not throughout the whole time. You feel me? That's why I said everything is about context. Let's say you had a hi hat and an open hat. That would be a good time to side chain the hi hat with the open hat because and you just do the same thing. You know, you follow the same process as we just did right now. Even if y'all want to hear it real quick, like. Let's just bring up a hi hat real quick and an open hat. I'm gonna make it hit every fourth beat. I should have just right click, but I didn't know. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. So. You see, this is our hi-hat information. See, see, they're both in the same frequency. And let's let's side chain the hi-hat to the um open hat. Boom. Side chain to this track. Open up a limiter. Use the compressor. Make sure you <laughs> link in the um actual input. Bring down the threshold, bring down the ratio, take that on. See if you hear the difference. So if your ears is not trained or you don't really have like the proper um equipment, like if you're just using some iPod headphones, you probably won't really hear it. Like I if you're a producer, make sure you get studio headphones and studio monitors. If you have to save up, work your ass off, whatever, do that, man. I promise you. <laughs> I promise you, you're gonna need that. And um But listen to the hi hat. Listen to the hi hat first. Hear how the hi-hat sounds. Okay. You have that in your head? Have the, um, put the open hat. Okay, so the effects is off right now. But hear how the hi-hat is like fighting. Now hear it when it's on. Off. 
on. See, now that's a little minutia thing, but it's it makes a difference, you feel me? And honestly, like I said, you you could do that, but it's it's really unnecessary. I mean, it's just really up to you. I'm not going to tell you how to mix, but you don't want to waste time on the little things when you should be more focused on the bigger things. <laughs> and whoever want to argue that, whatever. You know, every there's no rules to mixing. Don't let nobody tell you that. There's no rules to mixing. All right, I'm going to show you one more um thing that you could use as well for like side chaining. And that's called a peak meter or the peak controller, fruity peak controller. So you will put this on the peak sound, like the kick, kick. Make sure if it's on mute, take it off of mute. And then you're going to go to the, um, you're going to right click on the 808, go to link to controller, go to internal controller. And then do peak controller cuts. So, so it's going to link these two together. Go to your peak controller. Let's turn on the bass and the kick again. So this one's a little bit different. And you're going to see. Okay. So many of you might be like, where's the 808? I can't hear the 808. For some reason with this plugin, I don't know why they start the volume all the way down. So if you can see it right here, like if the volume is all the way down, it's like it's only doing this. <laughs> we want to bring our 808 back to the um regular level, regular level, which is like 80 percent. Boom. The volume knob. Bring it the other way, because look, if you have it this way, it's going to be pumping it up. We want to duck the frequency. So. We go the opposite way. Tension is just the curvature. Decay is like the release shit, pretty much. And how he had used it in the limiter. There you go. Like, hear the difference. Off. On. Hear how there's more thump in that kick. There you guys have it, man. That's side chaining, bro. Like, and remember, it's all about context, so use it <laughs> with precision <laughs> or whatever. So if you guys like this video, make sure you guys subscribe, you know, share with your friends, share with your producer friends if you find this helpful and um let me see if there's one more thing i want to add to this you know this is all live ain't no cut you feel me i ain't i ain't trying to edit and shit like that for the most part those are the ways you can side chain but i'm a there's going to probably be a two-part video to these sides to side chaining because remember when we're side chaining in this way we're side chaining the whole 808. Now, when we get into multi um, compressor side chaining, we're gonna be side chaining like a specific part of the um, frequency. Like we're gonna really be side chaining a specific part of, of the low end. And I'll get more into that because that's you know <laughs> that's the more advanced side of mixing or the advanced side of side chaining. So thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day.